Welcome you back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. Today we are joined by Raymond Brown from San Diego Football Network. Make sure you go check out everything that Raymond is doing. He's kicking ass, knocking heads, taking names at all of the levels, the high school pro and college uh, for local San Diego football. But we want to talk to him specifically about the high school level of his coverage. Raymond, was you were at Granite Lincoln, yes, last uh, for scrimmages? Yes, sir. All right, so he was at Granite Lincoln, so he's already got – uh, in-person analysis that we can get on whether or not Lincoln is going to be just as good, better, or worse than they were last year. Everyone wants to know, is it Coral's bad Lincoln doing the dance yet again? He's also got some info on the Granite Hills Eagles. We're going to talk to him about games coming up this week. We're going to talk to him about a bunch of stuff. Uh, but let's start, though, specifically with what you saw, Raymond, last week at the scrimmages. I know scrimmages are, you know, <laughs> The scrimmages are scrimmages. The ones, the twos, they have the yeah. scripts. They go out for a little bit. But I'm sure that you were also able to get a pretty good sense of both of those teams. What did you see last week? Yeah, it's preseason. You know, teams are trying to get prepared. They're trying to work things out, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, I want to say Lincoln and Granite Hills, I think they're both as great as advertised. Uh, Granite Hills, I was kind of concerned because they're losing a lot of great players, you know, especially at quarterback. They had two great quarterbacks in uh, Tomasello and uh, Parlin Sanders. And um, I was gonna, I was interested to see how they were gonna replace the production of both of them. They both bring a lot to the table, and um, they had a freshman. Jeez, I can't think of his name right now, but they got a freshman. He looks good. He can sling the rock. Looks great in the pocket. So um, I think Granite Hill is gonna be all right. Um, as far as them uh, repeating for the um, uh, Grossmont Hills, uh. Helix is uh well improved, so that's that's going to be another great game. You know, last year I went into overtime. That's going to be a, a game I'm looking forward to. See where both teams are at compared to last year. And uh, Lincoln, they had a uh, they had a kind of a slow start. The thing is, uh, we look at their roster, we see all the talent that's coming back, and uh, we assume they're the number one team, which they deserve to be. But um, you know, as the uh, 2023 Padres taught us just having a great roster ain't enough, man. You need to go out there and play the games. So um, Lincoln was impressive, especially in the second half. Uh, we all know they had to replace uh, Rod Robinson. Uh, they got two running backs, actually, that looks great. I think uh, both of them combined can uh, match his production. So, um, yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln's number one. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be Lincoln Carlsbad in the open. It certainly seems like we are dancing towards Lincoln Carlsbad, the rematch yet again. I'm curious though, Granite, you specifically highlight their uh, matchup against Helix is going to be bigger, more impactful, more meaningful. They jumped up into Division One this year, so I'm assuming that it's realistic. You know, them to be great again could still mean that they're like the three or four seed in D1. And like, I'm not trying to say that Granite's going to be, if as long as they got a quarterback, they're going to be an open division team. But this still feels like this could be a Granite team that is competitive in that division one race and is not by any means like, oh, we went five and five, whatever. We moved up in division one, sunshine and rain. Like this still feels like, even though the games are going to be closer, that this could be a really solid Division One playoff contending team. Granted, agree or disagree? I agree. I, I was concerned, like I said, but um, you know, Demarion Wright, um, he's as great as advertised. I saw him get some work in. Um, they they got a pretty good team. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but they were going up against Lincoln. You know, Lincoln got the most stacked roster. Um, it took some time, but. I'm not going to judge that. I, I think Granite Hills is going to still be that team. I think they can make another run to state. Now, the D1 playoffs going to be a lot tougher, of course. But, um, yeah, I, I can see them still making a run. All right. So, check the boxes off of two of our returning champs. They're both still going to be pretty quality teams this year in Lincoln and Granite Hills. Who else have you been watching this preseason that you maybe got your eyes on a little bit more in this week one? Like, Hey, I really want to see if they're going to be as good. Like is, is X, Y, or Z offense going to be as popping? I'm curious if this team is still good. Like who are some other plot lines that you're watching going into this, this week one or week zero of matchups? I like what I saw out of Madison and they, uh, they, they held their own in the scrimmage against a pretty good, uh, modern day team. Another team, I think that's going to be great again, uh, back to back state champions. I think they, they have a, a team that's good enough to be, to go uh make a three peat. 
So um, those are two teams I'm watching, both Madison and um, Modern Day. Remember, Madison, their only two losses last year was to Lincoln. So, you know, that says a lot. And um, they're getting a, they're getting a new quarterback. So we got to see what he could do. But, um, yeah, Madison is going to um, make some noise in the Western League. And um, they're, they're looking for a give back. Like I said, Lincoln was the only team that beat them. So um, that's going to be a great game. That's going to be more competitive than it was last year. The Western League is stacked, man. And we're – we ain't even talking about Cathedral as much as we usually are. And um, another team, um, the Saints, uh, St. Augustine, man, um, last year they were uh, they're basically playing freshman football in varsity last year, and they were um, holding their own. So um, they're going to be um, a team that's going to surprise a lot of people too. Yeah, the Saints one okay. almost feels like they're playing with house money this year and that next year's team is the, oh, my goodness, that's going to be the incumbent because they've been on varsity for so long and now they're all juniors and seniors. But, yeah, this year it's kind of like, okay, um, <laughs> baptism by fire last year and a lot of these yeah. kids had to grow up, but they actually are growing up. And also it can't go without uh, being noted that the Saints coaching staff continues to load. Like there's like four dudes on that coaching staff that can – or will be head coaches uh, has have been can be or will be head coaches at some point working under Gladnick. So like you kind of just sort of assume the success is, is bound to be there at some point, like you said, and it's a curious whether or not it'll happen, you know, week two this year, week eight this year, week one of next season, it's going to be really interesting to yeah. watch. That I team. trust Gladnick to uh, bring them back to a uh, contender. Like he said, he was working with a bunch of young kids and they're, they're going to mature over the next two or three years, we're going to see Saints amongst the top teams. Definitely, watch, you that. definitely watching for Saints. Um, you mentioned Madison. That's a tough one when you're like, yeah, hey, the only team standing between you and a perfect win, you know, perfect championship season is the team with the best defense that is the defending state champ. Like, yes. That's brutal to say that, yeah, your only losses were Lincoln, so they were that close. But yeah, it's like – damn it man we got to keep losing to the best so i am always like with madison i'm waiting for the year where they take their foot off the gas pedal and be like just let's let's do d1 this year uh you talk western league though what i'm most curious about in the start of week one of this season for western league is university city oh it's it's brutal to be moved (laughs) into the western league no matter no matter who you're playing not to mention all the talent they lost and well, and combined with graduation, combined with transfers, you know, it they didn't lose everybody, they didn't lose the coaches, they are defending champs, they do res- deserve respect. But week one also sometimes comes with tomato cans, and UC is gonna <laughs> line up against LCC, and that is yeah. not an easy matchup for either of those teams. But you would maybe look at that and go, man, no, no room for air there in week one for University City. That game is going to tell us um, what what uh, this UC team is going to look like because uh, La Costa Canyon is stacked. They got so much talent on that team. They're going to have a great season this year. I don't know how they're going to do an avocado, which is always a bloodbath. But, um, yeah, I like LCC. That's that's going to be a game. If UC could get past La Costa Canyon, then, man, look out. Yeah, or flip side, if LCC can handle business, you know, you wonder if these two teams are kind of transitive property. You know, both of them are going to be fighting for that mid tier of their respective leagues because it's just absolute bloodbaths. Week one, looking up and down at a lot of these matchups, some of these coaches are putting the gas pedal down in the scheduling. And I really, really like that. Um, I think that RB Poway is an interesting matchup just because it's the official start of the Eric Weddle phase or the Eric Weddle era at Rancho Bernardo. And those two, like if you had said that was going to happen later in the season, I would love that to be a, a late season matchup. Your thoughts on that one? Yeah, that's a great rivalry, man. Those two teams go at it. Um, I was an Eric Weddle fan back when he played for the Chargers. I had his jersey and everything. So I'm excited to see uh, what he does in his coaching career. Um, that's going to be a great game. Um, Poway, uh, they, they were such a great team last year. People were hating on them because they lost that game to Carlsbad, but, I mean, it was Carlsbad. You know? So um, they they lost a lot of great players, but they bring a lot of great players back. Adam Farhaw, so, Poway's defense, is one of the best edge rushers in the county. Yes, I'm really excited. Absolutely. Of 
Last game, because we could stand here and talk about all of them, and I do want to throw out one other one. We don't need a preview because we don't want to talk about San Juan Hills on this show. They're not our <laughs> section team. But Oceanside, you know, it's it's the start of a new coaching era, and we would be remiss. It, we would be a bad high school sports show if we did not focus at least some of our energy on one of the blue blood, pro, you know, true you know, honored name the brand names of San Diego high school football. And that is Oceanside. So we will be watching week one to see what Oceanside can come up with. The, uh, the game that I will be at is Bishop's La Jolla. Cause that's a great rivalry, at least according to myself and the teams that I want to pay attention to and watch, but the last game to close out week one, Raymond and your thoughts. And again, you can follow Raymond Brown at San Diego football network. He's doing great stuff on Instagram, on Twitter or X or whatever it's called. You can follow him for coverage all week is that the last game I want to get to is Del Norte and Torrey Pines because Del Norte, another one where it's the start of a new head coach's era, but he's got Ty Olson, who I think is one of the absolute best wide receivers in the County this year. And I'm just curious what kind of a, this could be a big upset potentially for Del Norte to pull off in week one. And I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Yeah. Del Norte is a team that will upset you. If you don't watch out, they, uh, we're so used to them being the small school, the small underdog, but now they got some talent. Um, Jack Schneider is one of my favorite quarterbacks. Um, and you, as you mentioned, Ty Olson, that connection is going to be great. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, see, I can see Del Norte winning that game. I wouldn't be surprised at all. They had a... Love it. <laughs> Love it. Wouldn't be surprised by it at all. Raymond, where are you going to be on Friday? I still haven't decided, man. Uh, There's so many games. Like, um, my cavers are going up against uh, Anthony Lawrence's uh, coaching debut. So that uh, at Grossmont, um, you got Verlaine's coaching debut over at Sweetwater. Yeah, I don't know. Turnover mania this year, and a very young generation of them coming in too. So the game I want to see is on Saturday: the Mission Hills versus uh, Granite Hills. That's going to be – that's going to tell a lot about both teams. I mean, um, Mission Hills is ready to get back to work after that disappointing loss in the D1 finals. So um, that's that's going to be the game to watch, and it's on Saturday. So Perfect. A little bonus game wait. of the week from Raymond Brown at San Diego Football Network is you can go on Saturday to check out Mission Hills versus Granite Hills. Like we said, follow him at San Diego Football Network. Raymond, thank you so much for checking in with us, and happy football season, my man.